ministry that you're doing this time around, God's going to use you powerfully. I, had a, I was able to share some lunch with uh, Reverend at Don and Mary's place the other day. Uh, we had a brief chat. It wasn't a long chat. But I, it, just in that time, I can sense that God is doing amazing things. And we're already seeing it uh, in the services that you've been running. So uh, we come with open hearts and ready to hear what the man of God has to say as God leads him. So why don't we give him a hand as he comes and shares this morning. I'm rejoiced in this morning and it's once again a privilege for me to stand here before the Lord and also before the congregation that God has called. So I feel the atmosphere here. I have been here in my previous visit as well, but to be very honest, the atmosphere has transformed a lot. Amen. So all the, it's positively, all the glory to God, hallelujah. And also I would like to give all my praise, glory and honor unto his wonderful name. Second of all, to Pastor Mike, and relevant authorities for opening up these doors for me to minister in this church. As a pastor and you all were been in the presence of the Lord, he especially used a word, the next level of the church, the next level. Uh, when I heard that, I was concerned a little bit whether the church has really realized or oh, understood what is the meaning of moving on to the next level? What is the meaning of moving to the next level? So church is not an individual. Church is all the people, the saints of God, who have been washed by the blood of Jesus and been filled by the power of the Holy Spirit. So today, around the world, whenever we see the church movement, I feel like the church is lumbering, not moving steady and fast, but few of the people who have been anointed and they play their part in the church. So as a result of that, many people, most of the people, they get, get attracted to the anointed ones, but not to the Christ. Because of that slow movement and individuals are being lifted. So when he said the next level of the church means you all, all will have to rise up to the next level. Hallelujah. Amen. You all will have to rise up to the next level. So it means, in the other way, when I say... Everyone must take the responsibility unto your hand as Lord has rendered it to you. And for that to be comprehended, that's why God has kept the shepherds, pastors, prophets, evangelists, teachers, and apostles. So they will guide you. They will tell you what is the responsibility and they will discern what sort of a calling that you have. And they will tell you, for this reason, God has called you. And immediately, what you will have to do is accept it without doubting. Without, don't be an obstacle to yourself. Today, many people talk about the Satanists uh, bringing us hindrances. And the neighbors are bringing us the hindrances. But we don't realize that we ourselves have been the most significant hindrance to ourselves. So we'll have to have that breakthrough first. Hallelujah. Amen. So everybody, I don't know whether this is the noise of the Australians. Because when I see the cricket matches, so your people are cheering so much. But in the presence of the Lord, it is very noise. I think it is a discipline, isn't it? <laughs> Shall we say hallelujah unto the Lord? Hallelujah. 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 So you have the same voice as in the stadium. <laughs> Amen. So let us turn to the book of Acts. Chapter 18. We are going to examine few verses. 
uh, Vincent Paul, the apostle, how he initiated the church in Corinth. So uh, I hope that you all have come to know to some extent the mystery, the reality of the church. Church is not an organization. It is the plan of God and it is the bride of God and make sure that he comes to the church in his next coming. He will not come to a city, he will not come to another house, he will come to the church. Jesus is coming soon. So the church will have to be ready. So you are the part of the church and the global church, we gather. But I believe yet there are millions about that billions of people yet more to be connected to the church. But now who is responsible for it? Who is responsible for it? Is it the pastor? Is it the organization? It is, the, is it the executive committee? Or is it a special team which is in the church? No. Unless the entire church goes to the entire world, the world will not see the salvation. Amen, amen. The entire church must go to the entire world. Amen, amen. One evangelist, two evangelists, they cannot do this huge task. That's why God said, my church, that is his church, and you are part of it. So, uh, shall we read uh, Acts chapter 18, verse 1. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. So that is the word. Now, Paul is an apostle, and he had given the vast missionary work. During his time, he was blessed enough to write everything in order for us to get the revelation how to just move from one place to the other. So this man of God, he was in Athens. But when he came to Corinth, Corinth is one of the largest cities during his time. It is very significant. As you all know, during their time, the emperor was Rome. And this man of God was moved by the Holy Spirit to come from Athens to Corinth. So today, we'll have to speak to ourselves and ask, I certainly believe the establishment of this church is being done by he himself. If you ask the founder of this church and the pioneers of this church, they will certainly say this was purely moved by the power of the Holy Spirit and the establishment was done by faith. Faith-based church in Christ. Faith-based church in Christ. So when this man moved, especially for the youngsters and the middle-aged people, I'm not ignoring the other party. They also should be added into it. So all of you all, Start moving, being in the church, moved by the power of the Lord from one venue to the other as God leads you. Today, many people, that's what I started with saying, people are lumbering means they don't want to move from place to place. And we have to realize 
God wants for us to move from one place to the other because to conquer this earth and establish his kingdom, we'll have to move. We'll have to move according to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So we might think, if I go to Corinth, so I will be all along. Fear not. I'm happy to say, though the Holy Spirit is invisible to you, the Holy Spirit is tangible to you. So he is just moving along with you wherever you go. Then secondly, you might think, who will help me? Now, there was some sort of a incident taking place in Rome. The uh, ruler, the governor, he took a decision to just send off the Jewish people away from Rome. People might think it is a curse. It is the unfortunate. No. That was a plan of God. That was a plan of God, dear loving brother and sister. Today I would like to speak to you very frankly. If you feel that you have been lost, if you feel that you have lost something in your life, it is not your unfortunate, no, it is not that you are not being blessed. In the midst of a hindrance, in the midst of an obstacle, that God has a plan and better to discover it without making any delays. Amen. Discover it. Now, Aquila and Priscilla, they came to Corinth. A man is coming from Athens, though it is in that the same region, but Lord has a purpose for them to come. Lord has brought them together. I always believe when I travel around the world, whoever I meet, we discern in the spirit that God has brought us together. Amen. So the purpose of God, we are being met. Hallelujah. Amen. For the purpose of God, we are being met. Amen. Now, Acula and Priscilla, now they are tradies, tent makers. Tent makers came to Corinth and they were waiting. There is no sound from the Lord that God has chosen them. But the momentum that they have, the way that they are moving forth is clear evidence of moved by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I pray that each one of you will take a step forward to move according to the way that Holy Spirit is leading you. Then you will meet a man. There will be an encounter. There will be an encounter for what? For God's purpose. Amen. Now, Paul left his disciples in Macedonia. And he came all along. But there was a great plan of God for this couple to come all the way from Rome to Corinth. Now, let us see the second, uh, the third verse. And because he was a tent maker, as they were, he stayed and worked with them every Sabbath. He reasoned in synagogue, trying to persuade Jews and Greek. This verse you'll have to meditate more and more. You'll have to meditate on this verse more and more. Now, they had a profession. The occupation was tent makers. So, no harm. They worked together. They work together, but their inner being is being inspired by the Holy Spirit for an establishment. Inner being is being inspired by an establishment. What is it? Now, the God is going to make a new initiative in Corinth through these three people. Can you remember Jesus said, two or three gathers in the midst of them, he is present. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you once again say aloud, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Amen. I let always rem- uh, keep on remembering, realizing, remindering. What is it? The cricket stadium. <laughs> then you always say a loud hallelujah because Aussies, they have won many World Cups. So when I say that, can you say hallelujah loud? Hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. You all are proud people, but be humble. <laughs> amen. Now, let us see here. Uh, Paul was trying to use his logics and strategies. When I was reading this, I found the way the Holy Spirit has brought him from Athens to Corinth and God had made an encounter with Aquila, Priscilla and Paul, but the way that he started is not right in the sight of the Lord. Any man can do a mistake. Why is that? Now, whenever he go to synagogue, he was reasoning. He's using all his logics, strategies, debating. Can you see? There is no result. There is no result. Christian movement does not depend on strategies. It is always by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Today the church has so many ways, methods, and different types of strategies, but wasting of time, wasting of finance, wasting of all the other things. So, even Paul was trying to use his knowledge plus all the strategies on every Sabbath. There is no result in doing this. There was no result. So, he was a God-fearing man. That's why he wanted to go to the Sabbath service he was there in synagogue. He was so encouraged and inspired to speak about the truth that he knows. But he speaks the truth not the way that Lord he himself has asked him to do. He's reasoning. In the other words, he's arguing. He's using all his intellectual way of confronting this Wrong beliefs in Jews. But the result did not come. I think he must have been fed up. Beloved brothers and sisters in this morning, you may be a God-fearing son and a daughter. You have done what the scripture has asked you to do. That's why that you have come to this church in this morning. But my challenge is, are you fruitful? Have you taken a breakthrough? Have you overcome your problems? Are you still in the same way that you were before? Is there any transformation taking place in your life? If not, that you are still reasoning out. You are a chosen one. You are a God-fearing one. But you approach God's work in a wrong manner. The Spirit of the Lord is asking me to say it once again. You are a chosen one. You are a God-fearing man. But you are approaching God's work in a wrong manner. So better take the right decision in the right way. Hallelujah. Because God is ready to just make many breakthroughs in this morning. So God is going to speak to some of the people And as your pastor wished, I know not accidentally, that word came out. This next level of this church will be seen soon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you people say amen for it? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, now, Now let us see what is happening in the next verse. Now Paul, Acula, Priscilla, now they must have been fed up. 
every Sunday, they go to the church, they be there, they try to convince people the truth that they know, the truth is in them. God has set them free. Now they are so delighted and they are so enthusiastic. So they are in a revival. But the revival does not come in the midst of this category. Why? He approaches them in a wrong manner. Why? We are going to see a few verses in the Bible. Now here, let us see what is happening here. Every Sabbath he reasoned in synagogue trying to persuade Jews and Greeks. Now Lord is not moving in the midst of this category. In this particular group of groups of people. Why? They were reasoning. Now let us see in the word of God. Mark chapter 16 verse 15. You all know this verse. Now what did Jesus ask? Now what did Paul do here? He's reasoning, but Jesus asked him to do something else. Now always stick to the word of the Lord, and it may be uh, seen to us as such a shallow level of thinking. Our Paul must be highly intellectual man. Now he must be thinking, I know Greeks, I know Jews, so I will speak to these Jewish people in such a manner. I will confront them. I will challenge them. But no results. That is his intellectual mind. But Jesus said a simple way to see a revival. What is that? Here, here is the word. You must uh, pick up this word very seriously. Mark chapter 16 verse 15 it says he said to them go into all the world and preach the gospel not to reason preach the gospel Paul must have thought that preaching is such an easy thing but reasoning making an argument with them confronting them that is the best result to produce no if Jesus asks you to do something so simple, it has a great harvest. Hallelujah. So don't, we, we should not try to teach Jesus. Let us teach what he said. Let us learn from what he said. Never try to teach Jesus. Today I see around the world, church is trying to perform extraordinary things. By using all the ways and means. But the results are very few. Why? We are not stick to the true word of God. So Paul made a mistake during this season. But praise be to the name of the Lord. We'll see what is happening next. Now, the word of the Lord says here. Gospel of John chapter 12 verse 49. Now Jesus, he himself speaks here. What does he say here? 12.49 it says, just see. For I did not speak of my own accord, but the Father who sent me commanded me. Father who sent me commanded me what to say and how to say it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now Jesus is very much concerned, very much serious, though he had all the omnipotent power, though he had all the omniscient knowledgements, though he had all the omnipresent ability, still that he stick to what his father said. Why? Now on the earth, he is in the human form. His spirit is 100% God. His body is 100% human. But he says here, very clearly, I am stick to what my father said. The 11 brothers and sisters, in this morning, can you speak to your inner person and ask, 
I am I doing the simplest things what Jesus asked us to do? Whatever God asked us to do, are we trying to be extraordinary? Are we trying to do superfluous things? And speak to yourself. Don't waste your time because time is precious. We cannot hold it. It runs. This second never will return. This hour never will come back. It is running so fast. So don't waste your time. Hallelujah. Be fruitful. Be a blessing to the others. Now it says, once again, shall we read that portion? For I did not speak of my own accord, but the Father who sent me commanded me what to say and how to say it. Hallelujah. I know that his command leads me, leads to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. Now, what is the imperfection of Paul there in Corinth in his first stage? He's reasoning, but he's not preaching. He was asked to preach. Don't get entangled with people by reasoning. You stand up. Be bold and courageous. If you see a person, you are a preacher. You are a preacher. You preach. What is the good news that you have heard on this earth? So that will enable God to use you and bring his power into the life of the person that who's listening. Preaching. So you'll have to do that. Have you ever done that to your family member who's not yet saved? Have you ever done to your closest one? Have you ever done that to your friend? Preaching? What is preaching? Preaching means that you share directly in a short form to a man what you have experienced and what is the truth that you have gained on this earth. You have to preach that message. Preaching is not scolding. It is not an embarrassment. Preaching means what you know is being shared in a short period of time. Teaching is different. Now, now let us see. Paul says here, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1, 2, 4. I believe that you have turned to the correct page, correct book. And here we will read. When I came to you, brothers, I did not come with eloquence or superior wisdom. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. Just see, this man of God, this man of God, now who was in uh, Corinth, in the initial stages, now we realize, reasoning, then uh, confronting, challenging, is not the way of initiating his work in Corinth. He decided... In the next verse, now we are going to see what he did. What he did. Here he says very clearly, When I came to you, brothers, I did not come with eloquence or superior wisdom, as I proclaim to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you, except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Just see, what a simple message. Today, many Christians, what they try to do is they're trying to uh, complicate the Bible. Bible is not a complicated book. It is a revelation of God and how he dealt with people from Genesis to Revelation and yet more to had to happen. It is not a complicated book. It is simply, if I say, it is simply... How God works with human beings. 
That is Bible. And he says, what is his will? There is no a single word or a letter to be omitted out of the Bible because that is God's heart. I always try to convince people by saying, on the Mount of Sinai, Moses received the Ten Commandments on the tablets. So who received it? Moses. To whom? It was to Israelites. Who gave it? God. Who gave God the Ten Commandments? Who gave God the Ten Commandments? None. His own heart. Hallelujah. So the word of God is not to be argued. It is not to be omitted. It is to be preached unto the people. Hallelujah. Dear loving brother and sister, it will never return in empty. If you speak a word of God in truth and spirit as you worship, it will never come in emptiness. Definitely it will give you the fruits. So always speak the word of God unto a man. He may not like it. She may not like it. But it will give you the fruits. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Whenever you speak to your friend, bring the biblical context. Bring it to that person. Share with that person. Then the Holy Spirit works in the midst of all these words because this is the heart of God. This is the will of God. So it will never return in emptiness. It will always establish what is it is being meant and said. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So people of God, so you must get used to read the scriptures every day. Today the biggest issue is cult is around. Now Satan has brought so much of sensitivity to the holy people. For what? To confront the cult. Let the cult be there. You speak the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is Satan's a sly strategy it uses. That church is wrong. This church is wrong. That man is wrong. Yeah. The wickedness was there on this earth before Adam and Eve were created. But God did not acknowledge them at all. Why? God gave enough potential for man and woman to overcome that wickedness. Amen. So that is the word of the Lord. He said very clearly, do not eat from this tree. That's a simple thing. It is not a big thing. If they were able to be obedient, they would have won this entire world. They would have overcome. But Simple words, be obedient. They were not able to keep that commandment. Do not eat from that tree. So Bible is not a complicated book. Here the, uh, the next verse it says, third one, uh, second, uh, second verse, for I uh, resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in a weakness and fear and with much uh, trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with the demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. Hallelujah. When you preach the word of God, you will never have your faith Rest on the preacher. You will see God more clearer than before. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, don't follow any man. Don't follow YouTubers. Follow Jesus. Amen. Today, without knowing the addiction of following characters have come to the church. They try to follow different people. Don't follow anybody. Follow Jesus. 
That is what the Bible says. So let us uh, go quickly to the book of Acts once again. And we'll see. Now, uh, his failure, Paul's failure, must have brought so much of frustration. Because there is no door getting open for him. He's trying his level best, but no door is getting open. No door is getting open. He does it every on every Sabbath day. He does it on uh, what God has asked him to do, but he's not doing it in the proper way, so the doors are not getting open. Now he realizes what should be the next step. Just see here. The fifth verse. When Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself exclusively to preach. Now he changed from reasoning to preaching. Hallelujah. Now he decided to preach. He's preaching, testifying to the Jew that Jesus was Christ. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus was Christ. Now he started preaching that. Now what a simple message is this. There is no physics, there is no chemistry, there is no biology, no mechanical engineering. He was simply saying, Jesus was Christ and he was crucified. He resurrected from the death on the third day and he became witness to himself and he proved all mankind that he has defeated the final foe and now he ascended to heaven. Amen. That is a very simple message. Do you, not high, do you want to have high theology for this? No. This is the self experience what you have tasted that is called salvation. He preached the message of salvation. Now what you must do? If you want to see a new door is getting open. If you want to see that the church is being edified. If you wanted to see the higher manifestation of the power of God. If you wanted to see a great development in different areas of the ministry, the message has to be a crucifixion which happened thousand years back on the Mount of Calvary, on the cross. That is our everlasting Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Preach that message to each and every one. You know, Jesus asked us to remember his crucifixion. Whatever the number of amount times that we can assume that why when we take the communion it is the gospel message that we remind to the church Amen. gospel message is needed not only for the newcomers it is needed for the church because we need to have the purification we need to have the sanctification unless you are not being heard once again and once again and once again in a repetition you must hear the gospel message because it sanctifies us Amen. it makes us to repent so dear loving brothers and sisters as the church if you want to see the next level of this church preach jesus preach the crucifixion of jesus preach the resurrection of jesus preach the ascension of Jesus, then people will be convinced by the power of the Holy Spirit and Lord will add more and more people to the church. Amen. The subject has to be Christ. Hallelujah. Now you see what is happening. Once he started preaching Jesus, so have you ever preached Jesus to a man? That is my question. Your pastor must be preaching about Jesus Co-pastors must be preaching about Jesus. Worship team must be singing about Jesus. But as believers, as disciples, have you ever opened this topic to the unsaved ones? Have you ever been determined to do so? Did you have the bravery to do so? Are you bold enough to do so? I'm challenging. I'm challenging. If you are not bold enough to do so, just examine your salvation. Just examine your salvation. 
That's why you are just hiding behind. That's why you are hesitating. You preach Jesus is the Lord and there is a new door getting open. Hallelujah. Once you enter into your friend's house, you can say, let the peace be upon you. Shalom. You can say, may God bless you. What is that blessing? Experience the mercy of God. So today I have brought peace into you that you will know the truth and it will set you free. And that is Jesus. Hallelujah. Today Jesus' topic is being reduced, minimized, and all the other things are being maximized. This is the issue around the world. That's why the revival does not come. Music is good. I don't say bad. I like music. I like singing. To be very honest, in Sri Lanka, fortunately, Yamaha, Montavo, all these equipments are there in many churches. If the music is not there, church would have slept jolly well. <laughs> but in the, on the day of Pentecost, the Bible does not say there was a huge worship team. There was a huge prayer. I really like when you say that next week. There is a great uh, prayer is going to be conducted. And please participate into that. If you want to see the revival, two things. Purification and prayer. Purification and prayer. If you purified yourself by the blood of Jesus, that you are going to the presence of the Lord. Once you are in the presence of the Lord, that you will be closer to the holiness of God. Then when you pray, God is going to answer you. Hallelujah. So now you need to have the revival. Revival does not come by finance. It does not come by the strategies. It does not come by the talents of the people. It comes from the Lord. Every nation must have this. Nation to have that, church must be revived. Hallelujah. Can you say amen for it? Amen. 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 Now, let us see what, what is happening next. Now, there are people who are stick to tradition. Now, now Paul was trying to just get to these people, uh, people who gathered in the synagogue. But, now, when he started preaching, Jesus, what God does is, he brings leaders out of synagogue. He was reasoning with the believers. He was reasoning with Jewish people, he was reasoning with Greek people. No one accepted Christ. But when God moved him to preach Jesus, now on the seventh verse it says, Then Paul left the synagogue and went next door to the, the house of Titus, Justus, a worshiper of God, Crispus, the synagogue ruler, and his entire household believe in the Lord and many of the Corinthians who heard him believed and were baptized. Hallelujah. Amen. What a miracle. All these times, he was trying to just reach the people who are in the lower level. But when he started preaching Christ, he reached the dignitaries of that particular synagogue. The leader, the chief man, has come to Christ. Not only him, all his households. Then, other Corinthians said, now the revival took place. Now, I really like in this portion from 9 to 10, what is happening is, now, preacher changes to teacher. Here. Now, you see here, uh, ninth one also very important. Now the Lord speaks to him and say, one night, the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision, do not be afraid. Lord said, don't be afraid. Be courageous. Because I have initiated something. You have come onto the proper path. Now you are speaking Christ's message. Now the revival has taken places. Can you see that synagogue leader, chief man has come to you, his households, they have come to you and the other Corinthians now they have added to the church. Now God is encouraging this man and Paul in, that, in the night by a vision, do not be afraid but speak and do not be 
Uh, do not keep silent. Lord, advise him two things. Don't be afraid. Don't be silent. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid. Don't be silent. What does it mean? Carry on with your work. Keep it up. Move forth. Don't stop now. Just because you have seen that the ruler of the synagogue, he has added to your church. Now you have the accommodation. Now you have the whole facility. Now you have etc. Don't stop. Don't stop. Keep on preaching. Keep on preaching. What is it? A good message. Good news to Corinthians. The Lord says the reason. Keep on speaking. Don't be silent. For I am with you. And no one is going to attack and harm you. Because I have many people in this city. Hallelujah. I have many people in this city. The Lord chosen ones are around. We do not know who they are. Go forth. Don't be silent. Speak of what? Speak of Jesus. Speak of the crucifixion. Then people will get attracted to the presence of the Lord. So this part has to be done outside the church mostly. So I pray. I wish that this church will grow faster and fastest. Hallelujah. And next time, if it is the will of the Lord to see you all, I want to see every one of you has spoken out the crucifixion of Christ and add one more to the church by his grace. Hallelujah. So that is your responsibility. Now what is happening here? Now, Lord decided to keep one and a half years Paul in Corinth. Now he becomes a teacher. When your pastor or the leaders become a teacher, church will have to be the preacher. If not, what will happen? You will just be confined to this perimeter. Only to this area. It will just fill all these seats because pastor, when pastor is transformed into a teacher, believer must transform into a preacher. Hallelujah. So if you don't do that, if you don't do that, church will never grow. You understand that? How many people can submit yourself to the Lord in this morning? Lord, I will take the responsibility. This is not a huge one. You don't need high theology for this. The man who speaks here, never been to a Bible college in my lifetime. I just entered into the ministry at the age of 16. Then they are onwards, simultaneously I was doing my schooling. I didn't learn singles properly. I didn't learn English properly. But I hope I converse in proper way to you. <laughs> at least English is manageable. Let me tell you, the things which are impossible to man, it is possible with God. Amen. If you decide, if you keep your step forward, if you submit to the Lord, that he is able to lift you higher and higher. Amen. As far as that you don't take the decision, if you want to be lumbering, if you, if you want to be hiding, most of the time you are just talking, but you don't, Come before the Lord. And you, if you say, Lord, I am here, that he will say, I am with you. Now just see the, what Lord is doing here. He came from Athens to Corinth on the guidance of the Lord. And he changed his strategy. The way he was reasoning, God did not like it. But when he started preaching, God knew very well that he is fulfilling what my son said. So I will have to give him the presence. I will have to be with him because he is obedient to my son. Because my son said, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now Paul is doing what God asked to do. So can you today submit yourself and say, Lord, as Paul, I have done so many things which are not relevant according to the scripture. It might have satisfied me. Church must have cheered me. But I was not 
between what your son asked me to do. Submission is not just because in the service we have an altar call that you come forward and just bring your hands together and bow before the Lord. Make a decision. Before you make a decision, you will have to understand the reason for the failures. We can catch up the time which we have wasted. If you are eager and if you are really wanting the will of the Lord to do. Even the aircraft, sometimes they are delayed. But on air, they catch up the time. So, you can still do so. Amen. Don't be discouraged. You, you might say, Lord, I have wasted most of the time. Dad, don't think of that. God can do a miracle. Hallelujah. Amen. God can do a miracle which are incredible to the eyes of the humans. God can do it. So here what is happening is now, just see, uh, I have many people in this city. So Paul stayed for a year and a half teaching them the word of God. Preaching, teaching, preaching, teaching. When you're a pastor, he has the most of the time to teach because that is the nourishment that you get through the word. Then if you start teaching, preaching must not be stopped. So the preaching responsibility is just transformed to the believers. You don't have to be a huge container to do preaching. Just see that the Samaritan woman who came to Jesus and she experienced what Jesus said and she returned to the village and she was so much being blessed and she was so inspired and she gave a very short message to the people. I met someone like a prophet. I met somebody like Messiah and he was revealing all my life. I feel so much of peace, harmony and tranquility within me. So then the villagers ears were open and they wanted to go to the presence of, the Je presence of Jesus or go before Jesus. Hallelujah. So my problem and my confrontation and my challenge is for you is, unless you preach Jesus, how can you say that these people are not coming to Christ? First of all, you have to preach. So when the pastors, when the deacons, when the elders, when they become teachers, always shift the gear for believers to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Then church will flourish. It will be edified. And the manifestation of the Holy Spirit will be intensified. Hallelujah. Amen. It will just take control over each and every one of you. Hallelujah. So thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to be before you all and to share this word. Can you all make a decision in this morning? You might say, I am not a man who has learned the Bible properly. I have not been ordained. No, you need something which comes from above. Be a preacher who will reveal who Jesus is. That is the biggest mystery on this earth. Billions of people yet not being known. So God will Make use of your life, your lips, your tongue, your vocal cords. For what? To reveal Jesus Christ to this world. Hallelujah. Not to entertain them, but to reveal Jesus. When we preach Jesus, there is love in it. At the same time, there is some sort of a hard punching when we preach Jesus. But when it moves with love, it will neutralize and people will come to know what the salvation has come to my life. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we stand in the presence of the Lord? I strongly believe that some of you all will take a strong and a powerful decision in this morning.
for the growth of Jesus' bride, that is church, that he is so anxiously waiting. Very recently when I was reading the Bible, I meditated. Something struck me. Jesus said he is coming soon. Thousand odd years back he said this. Then I was also have heard this in my childhood, in my youthhood. And I thought, he said he's coming soon. Yeah. He didn't tell a lie. He did not lie. Can you remember when God said to Adam, if you eat from this tree, you will die. At that same moment, we talk about the spiritual death of Adam. But thousand years are just one year for God. Okay. Adam lived only 930 years. According to heavenly timings, not even one day Adam lived. Not even one day Adam lived according to the heavenly timing. So, we are in, after Christ, we are in 2024. Jesus must have been saying, just two days and few minutes, I have just been away from the earth. Just believe, within a short period of time, the rapture will take place. Be ready for it. Rapture can take place at any moment. Only, only issue is, church is not ready for it. That's why he's delaying. If he comes, he won't be able to caught you up in the air. He will have to leave many. He doesn't want to do that. Be prepared. Let us commit ourselves to the Lord. If anyone is going under any persecution, any tribulation, in any ways of means, that now you are free to just submit your heart to the Lord. Open it. If you are a failed person, Accept your failure. Whatever you have done as a tradition for a long, long time, once you know the truth, just shift it to the reality. Then God will give you the strength to overcome all the difficulties. Let us close our eyes. We are going to pray unto the Lord. After that, I will hand over the microphone to dear Pastor Mike that he will lead us. Gracious Heavenly Father, this morning is not accidental. You are the Lord our God who is never early or before, after. You are on time. Your punctuality is matchless. Gracious Heavenly Father, as a servant of you, I believe this is the right message you wanted to just release from my tongue unto this church because this is your bride. You didn't speak to a prostitute. You spoke to your own bride because you wanted to have the beauty of the holiness and the way that you are expecting the bride to be. Gracious Father, equip these people, encourage these people. As Paul understood in Corinth, the first few weeks, he was reasoning and no results. Then he started preaching. Then he went on another one and a half years teaching that became the edification of the church. Gracious Father, now that the same reality will take place in this church and within a short spectrum of time that you will make this church to have a great transformation as your servant declared and wished let it be raised up to the next level and Lord once they reach the next level it has to be 
a spiritual edification spiritual growth and let this church speak to the nations and let this church move on to the nations where that they have not imagined even lord throughout this globe you give them the places as paul came from athens to corinth lead them lead them use them where all these missionaries go even the youngsters even the kids even the middle aged people even the elderly people let them speak about jesus let them speak about the crucifixion oh the resurrection and then the ascension my lord you are going to make this vast transformation in this church i ask this prayer in the mighty and the victorious name of lord our savior jesus christ amen